Peter Salmer. I'm a, a fourth generation Washingtonian living in the greatest neighborhood in D.C., Brooklyn in Northeast. All right. yeah, but the problem is, in Northeast, we don't have, we're like children of a lesser god. We don't have historic landmarks. We don't have any protection on this. We're seeing huge increases in financial instability, other words known as gentrification. We're seeing illegal construction, which goes to the point of honest service fraud on a federal level and a D.C. level. You know, we're trying to protect Howard University Divinity School from being destroyed by the developer. It's historic, it makes no sense. And then us as residents, we feel really taxation without representation because no one, no one listens to us on our elective level. So we have to go to you or to our federal um, AG office. What can we do? Because this is such a historic time that we have an opportunity zone. If we do this right, we bring opportunity for all. But if we let, leave these other people, these hustlers and bottom feeders, and most of them come from Florida, they're not even in the district. We're destroying this great opportunity to create the jobs that have created something like you. Thank you. And one of the managing partners of the biggest, best law firm in the Mid-Atlantic, Benefold in Baltimore, Global. Thank you for that. Peter. Peter, yeah. Okay. So. We're talking about various issues concerning uh, different wards across the country. Uh, Peter highlighted some issues uh, relative to Ward 5, and I think you very smartly and rightly uh, indicated uh, that a lot of the things that are going on in Ward 5 um, lend themselves to two types of corrective action. Political, and what that means is, you know, council, the mayor, uh, and laws and improvements. And I think there is no doubt that the city has swung dramatically in favor of big development. All development is not bad. And all developers are not bad. And in fact, when we're doing our, our slumlord work, yeah. I've got to tell you that uh, we've come across you know, a lot of decent developers. But there are folks out there who are truly trying as best they can to make as much money as possible. And indeed, our political process is such that those individuals and uh, entities have greater access, uh, influence, uh, than your average individual living in the city. So one of your corrective you know, lanes, if you will, ability to change things, is really political, organize, hold these folks you know, accountable. The other lens is the law. And so what we try to do is we try to make sure that our actions are founded in law, because you know, we're going to get bounced out of court. Um, but where we see those kinds of things, you know, people violating the rules, uh, illegal construction, my goodness, <laughs> the maintenance of totally unsafe environment. you remember the fire uh, that killed an eight-year-old boy uh, and a 40, uh, 57-year-old man, the rooming house, where literally the doors were bolted up, the windows were bolted up, no fire hazard stuff or anything of that sort? That's a result of, honestly, lack of regulatory uh, enforcement. Um, and you know, obviously we all have to be better at that. And that's where you just gotta hold the folks who are your elected officials responsible. Next question. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for coming.